for a position. You kept your eyes and ears open. Check out the kitchen on your way upstairs. Smell the air. Mmm, that smells good. This cook, cook knows what she's about. Or, oh God, all I can smell is boiled cabbage. Look around and see how clean the kitchen is. Oh my God, is that a mouse? I'm out of here. Take note of how the other servants treat you as you pass through. Are they courteous? Do they have a kind word? Or are they cold and aloof? Remember, they're checking you out too. You should ask the mistress if there's room for promotion within the household about days off, usually only one day a month. Can you send home food home to your parents? Now this is not as silly as it sounds because the post came five times a day and that meant that the food would arrive in a still edible condition. Besides, many families relied on this food for supplement. You need to know if someone else would be doing your laundry. Since it took on an average of three days to do laundry, this was a definite perk. Ask if you're allowed to supplement your wages with tips called veils from house guests. But most of all, find out about board wages. These are the wages paid when the family is not in residence, which is when most of the heavy spring cleaning is done. Some households paid half wages and only provided bread and tea for food. The mistress, what the mistress is going to look for in a servant is cleanliness. She'll inspect your hands. Morals, this means no makeup, no silk stockings, and no rustling petticoats, as they are all signs of loose living. But mostly, she's looking for honest, hard-working staff. Well, I just remember one house where I worked as an housemaid, and the mistress put a coin under the rug in the parlor. Well, I just knew I was supposed to put the coin up on the mantelpiece to show that I was cleaned under the rug and that I was an honest girl. But the mistress or someone had glued the coin to the floor. So I said, I don't mind them testing me honesty, or if and I'm doing my job thoroughly, but to make it so I can't prove myself? I packed up my tin trunk and gave my notice right quick, I did. Footmen had it hard in an interview, too. They had to be over six feet tall, and they were paid for every inch over six feet. If you were under six feet tall, you couldn't be a footman. If a household could afford multiple footmen, they all had to match in height, as no one wanted to break up a matched set of footmen. They had to have well-defined calves. False calves could be purchased, but the mistress would prick a footman's calf with a pin as part of the interview to make sure that they were real.